Hi, I'm Max Spainauer. And I'm Troy McCormick. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. In today's episode, we're going to be taking some friends of ours turkey hunting. And to go wild turkey hunting, obviously you have to have a place to hunt, a place that has to have turkeys on it, and you got to have some friends. We've got all kinds of friends in today's episode. In fact, four of our hunters are from the Kentucky and Indiana chapter of Paralyzed Veterans of America. Now, some of these guys have been hunting before. Some of them, it's going to be a new experience for them. But just getting out of doors and having fun is what we're uh, planning to do. And this particular adventure started out with uh, we were going to have one hunter that we were going to take out. And when I attended one of the uh, chapter meetings, several of the other guys asked if they could go turkey hunting sometimes. So we invited them along to, to go with us. Now we've got members of the uh, Clark County chapter of the National Wild Turkey Federation. They're called the River Ridge Longbeards. We've got uh, uh, members of the, uh, of the NWTF have pitched in uh, to help us out both with calling, uh, they've donated some money. Uh, we've got uh, sponsors like Bass Pro Shop uh, helped us out to give us some camo for our hunters for today. And we've got the Hughes Group that uh, is letting us hunt on their property here in southern Indiana. And we've just had all kinds of people uh, pitching in to uh, give us a hand to take these guys out to enjoy a little time out in the woods and experience turkey hunting. Now day one, it really wasn't what we had planned <laughs> because daybreak came and the fog was so thick that the decoys, you know, about 15, 18 yards out in front of the blind, you couldn't even see them. And even as the day wore on and it got to be seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, the fog was still so thick um, and it was so wet out, the water was dripping off the trees onto our, our hunting blind and uh, the, uh, the turkeys just weren't gobbling, they weren't uh, uh, showing themselves where we were anyway. Now one group had, Hack Albertson was our hunter, and they had some hens coming in. Boy, that fog was so thick. They also had a, a gobbler come in, nice long beard on him, and uh, he hung up just outside a shooting range and, and never did offer a shot. But they did have a bobcat that uh, walked by, and I think three out of four of our hunters actually saw turkeys and uh, just had a really good time. But boy, that first morning it was foggy.
with the National Wild Turkey Federation. I'm Hack Albertson with Paralyzed Veterans of Kentucky and Indiana. Hey, hey guys, today we are in uh, southern Indiana. A little turkey hunting uh, May 1st. Tell us a little bit what we've seen today. Well, uh, you can tell by my pants they're not out dusting much today. But uh, we've seen a bobcat, a real nice gobbler, and uh, three hens. Been a good busy morning. Just couldn't get them close enough. Well, the gobbler at least. The hens were close enough. Yeah. And luckily none of them had a beard, right? Yeah, none of them had a beard. That one looked suspect with her feathers, but we let her go. We're going to stay right here and see what we can come up with. See if we can't get the uh, pack of big Tom in. Yeah, it's like 9 o'clock in the morning and it looks like it's just daybreak. Yeah. And there's one out there now. All right. Took a little, lot of fog today, right? Yeah, it's a lot of fog. Thick fog. All right, guys, we'll see what we can do. At Timber Sales and Management, we help landowners meet their forest and wildlife management goals through various management services from timber management to wildlife food plots to specialized plantings. So whether you are managing your property for high quality timber production or high quality wildlife production, give Dave Pyle at Timber Sales and Management a call. He is a Quality Deer Management Association member and he promotes quality deer management by being the only land certification program inspector in Indiana. After serving our country, serious injury shouldn't prevent our veterans from enjoying life. Paralyzed Veterans of America works with veterans to ensure that their health care and benefit needs are met, provides assistance with career needs, and offers challenging and rewarding activities. The Kentucky and Indiana chapter of PVA is proud to provide adaptive sports for members that includes hunting, fishing, trap and skeet shooting, bowling, and billiards. Visit us online to learn more about Paralyzed Veterans of America. Life Essentials in Brookston, Indiana provides the products you need to become more independent. Products like our Journeyman Wheelchair provide all-terrain access for the hunter and all-around outdoorsman. Every year, thousands of people are born with or acquire disabilities. Whether your special needs are for residential, commercial, agricultural, or just enjoying the outdoors once again, we customize our lifts and mobility products to fit your needs. We're raising you to new heights. Call today and we'll work with you to take back your life. Welcome back to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. We're hunting today with uh, several members of the Kentucky and Indiana chapter of Paralyzed Veterans of America. Now, two of our hunters are paraplegics. One hunter is a quadriplegic, and we have one hunter that has limited mobility. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't slow these guys down. They're willing to uh, uh, put their camo on, get their guns out, and come out and have an adventure with us in the out of doors. And we were more than glad to take them out. Let's join back in with a little bit of that turkey hunting action in Southern Indiana and see what the birds are doing for these guys. Kevin, tell me just a little bit about uh, what we're doing out here today. Well, we're out here for, well, this is my first time, uh, out here trying to get a big gobbler. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is my first time, so we got out, uh, got out the got out the shotgun, got out the, got out the decoys, and uh, got uh, Jim over here calling, and got you 
filming uh, some good stuff, and uh, we're just waiting for a bird to come right through that uh, my little area here, and uh, so I can sight him in and uh, take care of business. So uh, now, you know. th things have been a little slow today, but we did get out out into the woods today, and a new experience for you. Brand new experience, never done it before. Uh, even when I was a kid, I used to hunt deer, rabbit, squirrel, you name it, but. This right here is the new experience for me, so uh, you know I enjoy it, and uh, you know it'd be a lot more if uh, we could get the big boy to come across and say hello. <laughs> now, being a part of Paralyzed Veterans of America has given you an opportunity to do different things, like getting out to uh, go hunting with us today. It's been ever. It's been so much for me. Uh, a lot of guys don't understand that you know these are the opportunities and the doors that. Uh, that are open to you, uh, that PVA can open for you. They open doors for me, and uh, this is just one of the many things that uh, we've been able to enjoy. So, without PVA and without Indiana Outdoor Adventures, and of course, the National Wild Turkey Federation, it wouldn't have been possible. So, uh, PVA, along with all you guys, have been just a tremendous thing. So, it's good for all the guys, and I hope they ain't jump back into it just like I am. Great. Now, for those that can't tell, we obviously have a uh, rather unique trigger pull system hooked up for you. Uh, if someone can't tell that you're uh, in a wheelchair, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, what kind of disability that you have uh, that you're basically overcoming today to get out into the woods. Well, I'm a C6-7 and uh, quadriplegic. And uh, for all those that uh, don't know, uh, limited, that means limited mobility up uh, yeah, below the uh, below the uh, way, so no movement down uh, downstairs. Uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, you can do it, and you don't have. There's so many things that people say you can't do it, and you can't uh, hunt, you can't fish anymore. But you, this is here is just proof of getting with the right folks and uh, getting certain things to help you maneuver. You can you can make your adventure happen. So it's really cool. Great. Well, we didn't get our turkey today, but we did have some fun, and we're getting ready to head back uh, for a, a lunch with everybody and uh, talk about our experiences today. Looking forward to it, and I just can't thank you guys enough uh, for the experience, and uh, hope to do it uh, next year with a bunch more guys. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter what your disability is. All you got to do is just dream, and you can make that goal happen. So I appreciate it once again from my everybody. That afternoon? We had storm clouds come in, and we had some thunder. But what was cool when we had the thunder uh, rumbling and we were packing up our gear, getting ready to go, we had a gobbler maybe uh, 150, maybe even 200 yards out. And every time that thunder would rumble, he just lift his head up and he just gobbled in response. He was a, a shock gobbling uh, to that thunder. Yeah, just, just as if we were calling on a call, when that thunder would rumble, boy, he would gobble just right in response to it. And uh, uh, that was kind of fun to watch and to, to listen to, but we never could get those toms out there that far to commit and come on into the decoys and offer us any kind of a shot. Cave Country Canoes, located in the heart of Indiana's cave country, offers a variety of canoe rental trips from half-day outings for beginners to two-day adventures for the more experienced enthusiast. Our canoe trips follow the gently meandering Blue River through the wooded hills of southern Indiana. Abundant wildlife and great fishing opportunities abound. Go to cavecountrycanoes.com for more information about our canoe and kayak trips. Your next adventure is just a paddle away. Hillbilly Custom Game Calls, offering the finest and precision made diaphragm mouth calls for wild turkey hunting. Each call is handmade and gauge stretched for exact tension each and every time. Select from double and triple read calls like you've never heard before. We also have an assortment of handmade wood box calls, glass and slate top pot calls, and predator calls that will make us your source for all of your custom game call needs. Look for us online at www.hillbillygamecalls.com. Sugar Camp Lodge offers some of Indiana's finest trophy deer and wild turkey hunting opportunities. We have 400 acres of woods, marshes, and farmland that provides amazing habitats to hunt. You'll enjoy great meals and accommodations and our beautifully remodeled 1850s Lodge. Sugar Camp Lodge is available for meetings, get-togethers, and special occasions. 
Visit us online at www.sugarcamplodge.com for more information and to book your next hunting adventure. On day two, the action picked up. We're out turkey hunting now with our uh, members of the Kentucky, Indiana chapter of Paralyzed Veterans of America. And one of our hunters, Charles, had a lot of action. They had uh, uh, several hens came in, a couple of them 10, 15 yards or closer uh, to the hunting blind. And they had one gobbler come in and he kind of hung up out on the road, uh, but finally moved his way in and started to come in toward the decoys. Here, let me let uh, Charles tell you about what happened. We've got an exciting story to tell with uh, our, our turkey hunter today, Charles, because Charles had a close encounter. Charles, tell me a little bit about what it was like uh, having your first turkey coming to you and getting prepared for the shot. I'll try. It was uh, pretty exciting. And this is a long, drawn-out story, but I'll tell you anyway for your listening pleasure. <laughs> we we uh, saw a hen come through, and then behind that hen was this big gobbler. And he followed that hen all the way across this field. And uh, it's a long field. Get, get up there close. We had a couple of uh, decoys set out. And both of the hen and the gobbler went around the decoys, but went down a ridge, ignored us, and then went into the woods. Now, now you're, you're in a hunting blind. Yeah, I'm in a hunting blind. So you're blind. kind of like in a camouflage tent, and they can't see you, which is the goal. Right. But you've got someone helping bring that bird into you. I do. Uh, Danny, and I apologize, Danny, I don't know your last name, but um, Danny did an excellent job of calling that bird in for us. Now, after the, they came back out of the woods, the hen kind of went towards the, the uh, decoys, but the... Uh, Gobbler didn't want to cooperate as much. Sounds so, right. yeah. And uh, I think it was about 40 yards out, and it just stayed on the straight line and stayed parallel with the, uh, like a ditch line or ridge line. And I kept waiting for it to pop its head up so I could get a good shot, but that didn't come. So it was conquered down with its head, and we couldn't wait any longer, so I just went ahead and took the shot. And, uh, it was an exciting shot, and the bird did some pretty good acrobatics, but it flew away. So it flew I away instead of falling down dead. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's there's a little bit of uh, uh, sorrow with that, but with the adrenaline rush, it still had to be exciting. Oh, it was great. Uh, it, the hunt was the best part of it, I guess you say, because uh, the anticipation, waiting for the the uh, gobbler to do what it's going to do, and hoping that the hen's going to take it in the right direction, and uh, just hoping it's going to get to a point where I can take a shot. And it did, and I was excited. I didn't know telling where the shot went, but I think it was in the general area of the bird. There you go, you were but, close. Uh, now Charles, tell me a little bit about it. This, this is a Paralyzed Veterans of America uh, combined with the uh, uh, Indiana Outdoor Adventures, National Wild Turkey Federation, all getting together to take uh, some guys from your uh, chapter out turkey hunting. Tell me what it's like to have uh, those opportunities and. Do you, would you do it again if you think oh, other, yeah. uh, 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 paralyzed veterans should get out and try something like this? I think they should. It's great to, to get out and do the normal things in life that you most of the time can't do when you're in a wheelchair or you're paralyzed. But with the help of these good people, and the Turkey Federation, and um, it's great to get out there and do the normal things. And that sounds simple, but it's not. Well, you know, we, we, we spent a little time making sure we had a, a location where we could get the, the wheelchairs to. But other than that, you know, there wasn't anything we were having to do that was, uh, you know, that different uh, than taking anybody else out hunting. Right. And the fact that you got a shot, you got to see turkeys both days. I mean, uh, our other hunters, uh, three out of four got to see uh, turkeys. We got to see a couple of bobcats. It's been, it's been quite a, a fun hunt. Yeah, deer, everything. It was just great being out in nature, and, and uh, the whole setting is beautiful here on this property. But uh, again, I can't emphasize enough, though it's the simple things, it, it means a whole lot to somebody in my position to be able to get out there and do the simple things. And you take it for granted. Yeah. Looking for adventure? Marengo Cave has it all. Explore the underground wonders of Marengo Cave with our two easy walking tours or go on an adventurous cave exploring trip with hard hats and lots of mud. Kids will love discovering gemstones at the Cave Springs Mining Flume.
This U.S. National Natural Landmark has been open to the public since 1883 and provides breathtaking views of underground cave formations. Visit us online at MaringoCave.com and plan your visit today. The Old Goat Trading Post in Bloomingdale, Indiana offers not only traditional fur hides, hats, and mountain man-like apparel, but beautifully crafted spirit hides. Artistically sculpted from elk, moose, deer, and buffalo hides, they are the perfect wall hanging for your home or vacation cabin. The shaved hair sculpture and original painted scenes combine to create a natural canvas and work of art. Visit www.oldgoattrading.com for more information. Lawrence County is an unexpected destination found in the heart of southern Indiana rolling hills, offering recreational landscapes, a rich limestone heritage, and unique outdoor experiences. This area is limestone country, well known for limestone quarries and stone carving heritage. It's also the home of Spring Mill State Park, geocaches, the scenic East Fork of the White River, and underground caverns. Plan your adventure at limestonecountry.com or call 800 800- 7980769. I'm Troy McCormick, and today we're at the Barbarossa Gun Dogs Training Facility. And Bob Knipper here is the owner of the facility. And Bob, we're going to talk about hunting dogs today, specifically upland game bird hunting dogs. Tell me a little bit about what kind of dogs you train and what all you're doing here at the Barbarossa Gun Dogs facility. Okay, great. We've been uh, training bird dogs for people roughly 20 to 25 years on a professional basis. Um, we built this new facility on a larger piece of property about five years ago. And really the focus of our training are for the uh, gun dog people, families that own bird dogs that are also family companions. And um, they may hunt them two, three weekends a year, or they may hunt them four or five weeks out of the year. So we focus heavy on those, those type of dogs that can be uh, your friend at home and be a good hunting companion in the field. And uh, we take on all breeds to train of uh, upland dogs, ranging from English setters to English pointers to vishlas to drathars. Um, we've even trained some standard bred poodles uh, for people. Um, we train all flushing breeds, uh, whether they be English Springer Spaniels, Labrador Retrievers, um, field bred uh, Spaniels of all other types, uh, Boykins. Uh, we've really seen a little bit of everything. Our personal dogs are field bred English Springers. Okay is our dog of preference. Uh, we like the speed of them, and those are the dogs that we uh, campaign in AKC trials, our Springers. Take me back to, I think you said poodles. Yes, yeah. As a hunting dog? Yeah, standard bred poodles were actually bred uh, by the Germans to be waterfowl dogs. Wow. And it's, it's interesting, the poodle cut that you see today, that's what established it. When those dogs would come in out of the swamps, <laughs> their coats would be coated in mud and stink. And, yeah. So they chose to shave them down, but they knew they needed to keep them warm, so they left the parts on the body to keep them warm, and that's what you see on the poodle today. The cut around the chest for the lungs, the ankles, the joints, the ball and the tail to rudder through the water. That's really what established it. So. <laughs> Never would have guessed that one. No. Now, we've talked about the different breeds that you're working with, but let's talk about the different uh, technical aspects, flushers versus pointers, and, sure. and the types of things you train them to right. do. Well, a flushing dog, uh, the ideal candidate to be a flushing dog is a dog that's going to stay within gun range and allow you to get a clean shot with the dog being totally under control. So we train all of our flushing dogs to quarter from a gunner to the left to the right of you. And that keeps a maintained pattern as you're going through the field. And they're only allowed to quarter out as far as the, the uh, handler will allow them or as far as maybe the wind dictates because uh, wind is what's the most important thing, of course, in bird dogs. They've got to have the wind in their face to properly smell the bird, or if they're going downwind, they have to roll back into the uh, wind. Sure. Um, so we try to maintain this pattern by teaching them to quarter at a very young age, by teasing them with pigeons left to right, and as the puppy goes left to right to get a pigeon, they're rolled in, he flushes and chases, he's rewarded for that pattern, and we make him turn at two whistle blasts for that pattern. Okay. And when he's too far out, a long whistle blast brings him in. So ideally, a finished flushing dog, whether it's a Lab or a Springer or any of the flushing breeds, will quarter left to right, go through the field in an appropriate pattern, flush the bird, the bird is shot, the dog is seated, the bird is shot, the dog stays there until you release him mm -hmm. to make the retrieve. That way, everybody's safe 
and the dog's not running up through the field flushing another bird or two that right. you didn't have an opportunity to harm. Now for pointing breeds, we teach them very similar to pattern left to right, but a pointing dog is bred to cover large expanses of ground right, okay. because he's supposed to go out and do the walking for you, if you would, <laughs> and find and pin the birds and hold them at point so that you can come up and harvest a bird. And again, under their command, we keep them woe broke. And what woe is, okay. is simply the sit, or in the English Springer world, we call it hup. Okay. Okay. What woe is, is your leash. When he's 100 yards out, okay. 50 yards out, 30 yards out, when I holler the woe command, the brakes go on and that dog does not move an inch. Okay. So the purpose of that is when he is on point in the field and you're coming to him, the woe command will keep him totally staunch so that you can go in, flush the bird, and the dog will stay there, the bird will be Whoa. shot, and you'll tap the dog or say his name and release him for the command. Now, I've been through your facility, uh -huh. and it reminds me of a thoroughbred racing horse uh, kennel oh. <laughs> or, or, or a, a barn and stable. Sure. Uh, tell me about this facility and, and what you do for housing the dogs right. and making them comfortable sure. and how the, that whole process fits into their training regime. Well, since we cater to people that the dogs are their family companions too, uh, they come to us because they know we're going to treat their animals like they're part of our family. Okay. Even if you come into our kennel, you'll notice the front area really looks like uh, your living room or it a does. small lobby. Um, we have 20 uh, indoor outdoor kennels. Um, the indoor areas are five foot by five and there's a guillotine door that lets them to the outside area which is five foot by ten. Okay. Uh, we do have an exercise area at the back of the building that's fenced in. Uh, to get them their exercise, but the dogs that we're training on a regular basis, they, they get plenty of exercise yeah. on, the, on the days they're getting worked in the field, which is really regularly. Um, we have radiant heat in the floor for the dogs to stay comfortable on, and you know, in the cold of winter or when we hose down and it's damp, that dries it out quickly. Um, we're very- T Tell me about the heating above and in the floor. Right, the heating above is uh, geothermal, heating and cooling. We utilize our well a system to provide the medium to provide the heating and cooling for the building and uh, we utilize tubing in the floor and just really a hot water heater if you would to temper that floor. Um, the building is hosed down on a regular basis and on a monthly basis it's entirely disinfected okay. from head to toe uh, just to try to avoid any cross contamination. Like I said we treat them like part of our family and uh, we want to keep everything spotless and clean. Yeah. If somebody did have a dog and they wanted more information on Barbarossa gun uh -huh. dogs, where can they go online? Well, the best thing is just get online to www.barbarossagundogs.com. It has a really extensive website, has all our information. It gives you uh, info to contact us and we'd love to have you come out and pay a visit. I think you'll be pretty impressed with our facility. Thanks for joining us today for our Paralyzed Veterans of America and National Wild Turkey Federation's Turkey Hunt. See us again next time right here on Indiana Outdoor Adventures.